Um, same drill as the last two media conferences, so we'll start with Carve from Sky Sports News. Phil, first of all, the uh, question that everyone's asked me to ask you is, uh, what's going on with the hair? Who was the inspiration? Was it Gaza or Eminem? <laughs> now, first of all, obviously, I've had like the same haircut for what seems ages now. Um, so I thought I'd just try something new. And then um, I woke up this morning with a lot of comparisons to Gaza and Eminem. So, so yeah, it was me on one thing and people turned it into something else. <laughs> What's the reaction been like from your friends and the other players in the squad? Yeah, you know, they've said that they've liked it, so yeah, it's a positive, positive thing, you know. Um, so yeah, it's all been positive, which I'm surprised about. <laughs> Are you aware of the comparisons with Gaza? I suppose you're only 21, so maybe you're too young to remember what a great player he was. Yeah, I remember watching um, highlights on the TV of Gaza, um, unbelievable player. Um, you know the full nation know what it means for, for the for the country and what he did so so yeah it won't be too bad if I try to um, you know bring a bit of gas on the pitch <laughs> it's obviously been 10 days now since the Champions League final has that been enough time for you to process what went wrong and to get it out of your system um, I feel I feel like the best way is to forget about what happened is playing football so when I'm back on the training pitch with the guys here, um, I straight away forgot about it and yeah, just focusing on England now and trying to do well here. Obviously there's so much competition for places in this squad, especially in those forward positions. Is that similar to the situation you have at Manchester City or is it even harder to get in the starting eleven here? Um, yeah, it's pretty similar to be honest. Um, no, I feel sorry for Gareth trying to pick an 11. Um, whoever he leaves out is going to be top quality players that are going to be on the bench. So whatever he does, I think you know the lads are going to be behind him and just believe in him. You're obviously very close to Pep Guardiola at Manchester City. What's your relationship like with Gareth Southgate? And do you see any similarities between the two managers and the way they work? I, f I think they're really different. Um, obviously, they have the wrong ways and ways of playing. Um, Gareth's great, you know, he talks to everyone and lets you know how he's feel, feeling about you and where you can improve. So, so yeah, I've had a couple of com conversations with him and, yeah, it's great to talk to and he's always putting um, his arm around the players, which is important. Thanks, Carvey. We'll go to Zoom for one, uh, starting with Oliver Holt. Hi, okay. Yeah, good. Um, Phil, we've obviously got um, a lot of history in this tournament. Not all of it good. A lot of baggage in terms of going back even to Gareth in 96 and a missed penalty, Iceland in, in 2016. We've got one of the youngest squads in this tournament. I, I just wonder if that might be a good thing in terms of the fact that we don't actually, people like you, we don't actually carry a lot of the baggage of those past traumas? Well, yeah, first of all, I just want to say um, the quality is very high. Um, yeah, we have got a lot of young players, but um, they can play at the highest level, and we're seeing that this year. So, um, yeah, of, of course, we've still got the experience, you know, that like Harry Kane and Jordan Henderson around, around the team as well, which is important. So, um, yeah, I think we have a great balance in the squad, and yeah, I think that we can. We look really strong this this tournament, and why not? We could we could win it. Thanks, Ollie. Uh, next goes to Nat Perks, BBC Sport. How um how permanent is this hair? Are we going to see this against Scotland? Because you know what the comparisons are going to be. You've already mentioned his name. Yeah, I've dyed it now, so it's got to stay around for a while. So it's not going. It's not going to change anytime soon. So you're okay with being called now the Stockport Gazer? Yeah, I don't mind that. You know, obviously he's a he's a great player, so. I wouldn't mind that at all. Listen, you're, you're obviously being talked about in very high terms by England fans, so excited to see what you can do on this stage. Do you feel any pressure at all? Um, I wouldn't, no, not pressure. I'd feel, I feel excited. Um, you know, it's my first time at a major tournament with England, so I'm just excited to see what happens and what, what, what the future holds. England don't have a great 
um, history when it comes to the Euros. Um, how is this time going to be different? What's the mood like around all of you as to how far you can go? Yeah, you know, we've looked at previous times together as, as a team and, you know, we're all just feeling dead confident. Um, you know, obviously me, Mason and, and Reese and Raz has, has made the Champions League final. So, um, you know, we've all been playing at a great, great standard this year. So I believe as a group and all together that um, we can really push on to win it. Thanks, Nick. Uh, next to Zoom with uh, Marcello Courage. Yeah, now. Yeah, got you. Now it's fine. <laughs> yeah. So, Phil, um, uh, coming from Brazil, I'm from Brazil. Uh, I can relate to the sort of comparison that uh, people here do uh, with young players, you know, growing up and achieving the highest stages too fast in their careers. So, my point is that uh, we tend to put you guys, super talented young players, in the highest shelves of world football too early sometimes. Are you okay with that? And is that a sort of pressure to you? Yeah, I believe that's true. You know, um, you know, when someone's doing well, they really jump all over it. But you know, we have a lot of um, young players in the team, and they're all very level-headed. So um, yeah, it's not going to get to me or any of the young players. Um, so yeah, we're just going to keep focused and just try and try and bring it on. Thanks, Marcello. Uh, Carrie Brown from Bean Sports. Phil, um, after getting over the disappointment, how quickly can you get over the disappointment of a Champions League final and then go in as teammates with the players you were defeated against? Yeah, obviously it hurts losing such an important game. But like I said, you know, I'm here training now with the team and you have to forget about it and be teammates. And yeah, we're all together and we're all working really hard to try and do the best we can. The positive among some of the disappointment that Manchester United players are feeling as well is that we've got a crop of players that have all got to major finals this year, that have won titles as you continue to do with Manchester City and played such a big role in, and with Chelsea as well. Across the board, you've got players used to those crunch moments, to lifting silverware. That now is a big positive. Yeah, I think that, that can definitely help us. Um, like you just said there, we've had a lot of players playing in important games. So we'll know what it feel, feels like if we get to the later stages and yeah, it can only help us. And I want to look to the game against Croatia. Where were you watching that match and, and what did you think of it? Which game, sorry? Um, England against Croatia in the semi-final. Oh yeah, I was at home with my parents um, watching the game. Um, I think it was Trippier who scored the free kick. Um, it got, got everyone out of the seat. Um, but you know, um, the lads did everyone proud that day. Um, and yeah, it was just a shame that we couldn't um, push on to the later stages. Some suggestions that Luka Modric's powers are waning. Is he a player that you look to as well through the highlights of the years? And, and do you consider he's waning at all as a talent? Yeah, you know, he's a fantastic player. Um, it's the one that we have to keep a close eye on. Um, yeah, he's, he's won a lot of trophies in his career and done a lot of things. So, so yeah, he's a great player and we're going to try and deal with him best as possible. This really was a breakthrough season for you. Only Kevin De Bruyne contributed to more goals for Manchester City, which is a remarkable statistic to have in really your first big se season in the Premier League. Who was key to shaping that and who from the Manchester City group of players have really helped you perform to you know, the top senior levels? Yeah, you know, I've had a great season this year with my club. Um, but, you know, I'm here now training with England and that's the full focus is um, to try and do the best I can here. So that's all I'm focused on is, is, is being with the lads and, and, and working with England. I know for Raheem, your teammate, his, um, Wembley is a very special place for him. A lot of selection about who could start from and he's saying you two have to start. But could you imagine that back then at the start of this season, everyone said, you know, you you're nailed on to start, they'd expect you to start, they hope you to hope for you to start in a major final. Yeah, you know, there's there's no guaranteed starter in this team. Um, I think Gareth's just got to look at training and see who's um, training the best and where everyone's at with fitness and things. So, so yeah, anyone could start and um, be amazing. And that's the strength we have, have in the squad. And for Raheem, do you think he can perform at the top of his levels returning to Wembley again? You know, his, his goals speak for himself. Um, every year he's always there. Um, 
always scoring so many goals and creating chances. Um, so yeah, Raheem could be a really important player for us. You're a strong collective, you're an influential young man. Are the rest of the team going blonde? Sorry, say that again. Will the rest of the team go blonde too? <laughs> um, no, not too many um, as brave as me. So, so yeah, I think they like their hairstyles and keep with what they've got. Thanks, Gary. Uh, we'll go back to Zoom briefly uh, with Anten Antonello Guerrero from La Republic. Yes. Uh, hello, Phil. Um, I just wanted to ask because you're very young, but you're also extremely experienced already. Um, what is the, the, the thing that you learned, the, the most important thing that, that you learned during this long season um, among you know, wins and, and uh, uh, losses? And also, um, what's the biggest challenge for you in this Euro Cup? Thank you. Yeah, you know, I've um, learned a lot this year. Um, so many ups and so many downs. Um, and yeah, I'm just lo looking forward to hopefully bringing him a good form into the national team and doing the best I can. Thanks, Antonello. Uh, we'll go back to the room with Steve Scott, ITV. Um, Phil, this is, you said this is your first major tournament. I just wondered if any of the other players in the group who have played in a major tournament before have talked to you and others like you who haven't experienced this environment about how to make the most of it. Yeah, we've not long um, met up, so I'm sure that we, we will have them conversations about old times and how we can do better. So, so yeah, let's see what happens. Thanks, Steve. And go back to Zoom with Jerry Cox from Haters. Hi, Phil. Um, Luke Shaw was just saying, you know, because his form was out, that if, if it hadn't been for COVID, if the tournament had been last summer, he probably wouldn't be in the squad. Do you think that's the same for you? Because obviously this has been really a breakthrough season for you, hasn't it? Maybe, yeah. I feel that's the same with a lot of players. Um, yeah, it could have been um, a bad thing that, you know, um, it should have been when it should. But, you know, I've brought great form on this year and, and I've had to work really hard for the opportunity. So, so, so I'm just going to try and enjoy it the best I can. Okay, we'll take a couple more of this live section. One from Zoom with David Alvarez. Hello, Phil. How are you? Okay. Um, I've seen uh, you've also been compared to David Silva, with whom you've uh, shared quite a, quite some time at City. Um, what is from his game that you see yourself uh, reflected on, and and what? Uh, from his game, do you admire or do would like to to acquire? Thank you. Yeah, I think everyone knows that. Obviously, David Silva was one of my favourite players growing up. Um, but you know, I want to be my own version of me. Um, so you know, I don't try and copy anything he does. I just take the good points and try and put it into my game the best I can. So, so yeah. Thanks, David. And we'll finish this section with James Ollie from ESPN. Hi, Phil. Uh, just following on from that, really, you've had. David Silva, Paul Gascoigne comparisons just thrown at you in this press conference alone. <laughs> do, do you take any of that on board? Do you, do, I mean, how do you kind of switch off and remove yourself from that? Yeah, I don't think you um, can listen too much to what people are saying. Um, I have to try and keep my feet on the ground and just keep being me and keep doing what's um, done well for me this year. What, what do you actually do, though? Do you, I mean, do you... Do you have a mechanism by which you kind of detach yourself from that? Do you, do you read that sort of stuff or do you just not take it in at all? Just try and come off social media as much as I can. Um, I'm not trying to read it too much. Thanks. Thanks, James. OK, that concludes a live section of this press conference. We'll now move on to a short section embargoed until 10.30pm this evening. And we'll start with Dave Kidd from The Sun. Hello, Phil. Um, sorry to bring this up, but... Um, after the Iceland game, I think that some of this prob what happened in Iceland, a lot of us probably thought you might not be here. Did you ever think that, or did Gareth say straight away, you know, you, there's, a, there's a way back in in the short term into England? Yeah, obviously I made a massive mistake. Um, I was young, um, but you know, Gareth said if I keep, you know, just doing well and keep performing, I should get another opportunity. So, yeah, I had to work really hard for that, and yeah, there's not many managers that would give you another opportunity. So. You have to thank Gareth a lot for, for giving me another chance. Thanks, Dave. Uh, James Robson from The Standard. Hi, Phil. 
Um, you, you grew up in an era when uh, probably um, international football was kind of taking a back seat to uh, club football, Champions League, etc. Um, were you still a lover, an England fan when you were younger? I wonder, did you have a player who was an inspiration to you and who it was if you did? Um, yeah, I was a massive, obviously, England, England fan growing up. Um, I couldn't really just name one player. Um, <laughs> I just loved the, the full team. Um, together there were so many great players and yeah, I believe that we should we should have got more from the team that we had. Um, but yeah, we just want to focus now on what we're going to do and try and create our own history. Thanks, James. Uh, next we'll go to Jacob Steinberg from The Guardian. Hi, Phil. Um, I've read that you're a Panini sticker obsessive uh, collector. Um, what is it that you like about that? And are you doing one for the uh, for the tournament? Do you have time? Um, so what it was, um, um, when I was last with England, um, they gave us the, the Euro collection thing to, to, to complete. Um, so yeah, I had that in my room when I was bored, just putting them in, something to do. Um, and then I started enjoying it even more. So. I started collecting a few more, um, and yeah, I still do that now. Uh, Matt Law at The Telegraph. Hi, Phil. Um, just back on the, uh, the Euro 96 theme, obviously you're kind of four years too young, you were, it was four years until you were born after that. I wondered if you've managed to watch bits of Euro 96 just generally and, and catch up on it, and also, have you ever tried the Gaza versus Scotland goal in training or anything like that? Because you look like a player who might be able to pull that off. No, you know, I've obviously watched um, some of the highlights on TV before. Um, I know which one you're on about, the one where he flicked it over his head and, and scored. Um, so, yeah, I remember just um, watching so many highlights from in the past and dreaming about wearing an England shirt. So, yeah, I feel really, really lucky to be here now and to put the shirt on. Thanks, Matt. And we'll finish uh, this embargoed section with a question from uh, Brian Marjorie Banks of Scottish Daily Mail. Hi, Phil. Could I, could I just ask you what you've made of the emergence of young Billy Gilmore at Chelsea and how tough an opponent would he be if selected for Scotland at Wembley? Yeah, you know, he's a great talent. Um, he's still so, so young, um, still a lot to learn. But yeah, I played against him a few times and Every time I've played against him, I've been impressed. So yeah, he's definitely going to be a great player in the future. Um, and he'll be a great, great player for Scotland. Okay, everybody, we'll end it there. Thanks for joining us today.